you already know what is a matrix well a two dimensional or rectangular arrangement in the form of horizontal lines and vertical lines is called a matrix where horizontal lines represent rows and vertical lines represent columns so this is an example of a matrix say 2 3 4 So in our previous lectures, you've learned how to calculate the number of rows and the number of columns. You also know that say this matrix is of the order what m by n, where m represents number of rows and n represents number of columns. So can you tell me how many rows and columns are there in this matrix? Well, one, two, so two rows and one, two, two columns. So this matrix is of the order two by. another thing any element of matrix a appearing in the ith row and the jth column is known as i comma jth element or i comma jth entry of such matrix and any matrix can be generalized or defined in the form of a is equal to any element a of ith row and jth column and this matrix has the order m by n where m represents number of rows and n represents number of columns so let me take an example here let me take the example of number 12 can you tell me what is the position of number 12 which row which column well it lies in 1 2 3 third row and 1 2 3 third column as well so it is the third so how will we represent this so 12 can be represented as third row third column entry so now you know how to define elements of a matrix here i have given you this matrix i have also given you a similar kind of matrix with elements a now these elements are actually defined why are these elements written a11 a12 a21 a22 well these are actually defined how see this element falls in the first row and first column this elements this element falls in the first row second column whereas this element falls in the second row and first column and this element falls in the second row second column so instead of writing them again and again in this form we can also define elements like this for example if i have a bigger matrix say like this now all the numbers here or all the elements here are a how will you define it with their rows and columns see this element falls in the first row first column so we will write this as 1 1 this this represents first row first column what about the second one again first row second column so 1 2 now this one again first row but third column like this tell me about these elements now the second row so 2 2 2 you agree with me what about the number of columns again will that re remain same see 1 2 3 so 1 2 3 right now fill up these again this has the third row so all these elements are fall in the third row what about the number of column first column second column third column so this is how you define these elements now tell me how many number of rows are there in this matrix this is easy 1 2 how many number of columns 1 2 order of the matrix you already know how to write the order of the matrix it is m by n where m represents number of rows n represents number of columns and we always always write the number of rows first and then the number of columns so 
Here you can see number of rows and number of columns is same. So m by n represents 2 by 2. So the order of this matrix is 2 by 2, right? Now number of elements in the matrix. Well, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4. But also with the help of the order, you can multiply and see 2 into 2, 4. Now they have asked you find the element at the first row and the second column. Well, just by looking at this, can you tell me which is the element at the first row and second column? Well, see, first row, second column. First row, second column. So this is the element. 8, 12, that is 7. Exactly not 8, 12. It is first row, second column. So now you know how to define matrices, how to define the elements in the matrices and now you know how important are rows and columns in a matrix. So never get confused when we write an order of the matrix. Never write the number of columns first. Always write number of rows and then the number of columns. Now I'll tell you how many types of matrices are there. You know that matrices can be represented in many ways. They can have any number of rows and any number of columns. The number of rows and columns may not be the same. Now, there are many types of matrices also. Look at this. This is a matrix A and this is a matrix B. So, A has elements 3, 7, 4, 5. B has elements 3, 7, 4, 5. Now, do you notice one thing? That both have the same number of rows, same number of columns. This is of the order 2 by 2. This is of the order 2 by 2. Both have the same order. That means both have same number of elements if they have the same order. Now you have to look that both have the same entries at exactly the same place. Look, 3, 7, 4 and 5. Exactly the same place. So this is actually identical. A is identical to B. So these two matrices will be considered as equal matrices. So here matrix A is equal to matrix B. Let us see some more examples. Look, P and Q. Forget about A and B, we have already done with it. P and Q. Are they same? Well, looks actually same. Tell me, P and Q are same. Let's first start with their order. So P has the order 2 by 2. I can see that. Two rows and two columns. What about Q? Two rows, two columns. Again, so 2 by 2. Again, they have the order same. That means the number of elements is also same. Now, if two matrices have the same order, does that mean they are equal matrices? No. That does, that does not mean they are equal matrices. But equal matrices have the same order. You can see these two were equal matrices. They had the same order. Right now, we do not know whether P and Q are equal matrices, but we know that they have the same order. Now, to know whether they are equal or not, what you will do? You will check for the entries, whether they are exactly at the same place in both the matrices. Look, 3 present in both. 7 is present here. So the position of 7 is changed. 4 has the same position and 5 has changed places with 7. So here you can see these entries have changed their places. So P and Q are not equal matrices even if one entry has changed its place or not even changed its place is different. Suppose we had 7, 7 here also and 5 and 7 here. So this entry would not be equal to this entry. So P and Q are not equal matrices. Right? Now, look at X and Y. Now, after knowing so much about equal matrices, you can tell me whether X is equal to Y or not. Look for yourself. First of all, tell me about their order. Two rows, two columns. Again, two rows and two columns. So, their order is 2 by 2. Look for the entries. 3, 3. 4, 4. 
again see seven five a seven not equal so here you can see that but what now suppose i told you from earlier that take x is equal to y for example i change some values say three four three four this is seven this is also say seven okay so suppose this matrix has three seven four a this has three seven four seven okay so here you can see that a is a variable here a can be any number so if i tell you that take matrix x is equal to matrix y what does that mean when are two matrices equal two matrices are equal if they have the same order and all the entries are exactly in the same place in both the matrix that means 3 has to be here 7 has to be here 4 has to be here and this a is of what value similarly it is of the value 7 so if i tell you that two matrices are equal then any variable here would represent the number in the second matrix so you could easily find out the value for a that is 7 right suppose if i would have written this as b and told you find out the value of a and b so a would be 7 and b would also be 7 if and only if x is equal to y so now you are clear with equal matrices well there are more matrices let me tell you about them well a matrix having only one row is known as a row matrix well you are already familiar with such kind of matrices we have seen them in previous lectures that matrices can also have just one row well this has only one column no this has one two three columns but has data only in one row so this can also be a case of matrix so when a matrix has only one row it will be known as a row matrix similarly if only one column then column matrix easy now a matrix in which the number of rows equals the number of columns is called a square matrix similar kind of matrix we have de dealt in previous slides where we had this 3 7 4 5 here what was the case number of rows was equal to the number of columns so m was equal to n here so this kind of matrix will be known as a square matrix well not only this suppose i have a matrix this like this tell me the order 1 2 3 1 2 3 so 3 by 3 so here again the number of rows is equal to the number of columns so this will be said as a square matrix thus a matrix of order n into n is called a square matrix of order n why n into n how does the number of columns becomes a number of rows well if m is equal to n you can write this as m by n can be written as n into n like this so here the number of rows is equal to the number of columns in both the cases so these will be known as square matrices again we have one more type a matrix whose each element is zero is called a zero matrix well even such can be cases where each element is zero well yes in matrices not only zero you can also have elements which are negative numbers as well like negative integers for example like this like this is this a zero matrix a matrix whose each element is zero is called a zero matrix so such matrices are known as zero matrices and this is just an example of a matrix where we have also used negative integers well you can give one name to this matrix can you tell me what well this has equal number of rows and equal number of columns like two rows two columns so this will be known as a square matrix even a zero matrix can be a square matrix because number of rows is equal to the number of columns just the difference is that a matrix whose each element is zero will be known as a zero matrix look at this matrix what do you think 1 0 0 1 which kind of a matrix is this 
row matrix, column matrix. We have just learned zero matrix, square matrix. Which one? Well, not row because this is not a single row. Not column, not a single column. We have one, two, two rows and one, two, two columns. So which kind of a matrix is this? Square matrix because the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. So this is a square matrix. Then one more thing. We have also heard about zero matrix where each element is zero. Here, each element is not zero, but one thing you can see that diagonally the elements are same. Diagonally this has one and one and diagonally this has zero and zero. Does this have anything related to matrix? Let me show. See, a square matrix in which each diagonal element is one and all other elements are zero is called an identity matrix. Now, what does that mean? A square matrix, this is of the order 2 by 2. Let me take one more square matrix. Say like this. Like this. What is the order? 3 by 3. So both these are square matrices. You agree with me? A square matrix in which each diagonal element is one. Each diagonal element is one. See, all the diagonal elements are one and all other elements are zero. All, all other elements. So, leaving the diagonal part, all other elements are zero. Then they will be known as an identity matrix. See, Zero matrix and identity matrix are very much used while we do the sums of matrices. You will learn about these more in the next lectures. Well, these were the different types of matrices we've learned just now.